Was there any aspect of this transformation of character or transgender character that came into that piece as well? Was that less, it seems like you were more taken by the structure? Um, that came in later when I, um, I told you I needed to um, take some time to figure things out, but because I was in school, I couldn't just take time off. And it's also not my style to just stop. So I came up with this um, process that I thought would give me mental space, while at the same time also keep my hands busy to produce something that I then could show my teachers. And I thought knitting might do that. I have never knit in my life, but um, it seemed like a, like, a, like a rhythmic, diaristic, mindless kind of activity that would give me mental space to, to, to sort of... So why did you start knitting? I, I used the transparent tape because it was the material that had sort of... Um, so you were knitting with tape? I was knitting with transparent tape. Okay. I was just knitting... A, I, I knit a coat and out of this tape which was but in part because it was genderless. I didn't want this to be misconstrued as something that it wasn't. It really was an homage to Eichelberger. But as this homage, the knitting seemed appropriate because it was a slightly charged activity, at least in the early 90s, for a guy to knit. So in that sense, that's where the homage to his uh, gender bending for uh, persona came in. But I didn't want to push this conceptually too much because I think it would somewhat mess with the innocence of that gesture. So while you were knitting as a process of getting to the next point, what were you thinking? What, what did come out the other side other than a coat? Um, many coats. <laughs> many coats, <laughs> but, um, many colors? Or ten just years later, I did okay. this for ten years, and um, you know, in the process a lot changed because um, I suddenly started to show that work. My relationship to the process had to be completely reevaluated over and over and over again. And um, I learned a couple of really important lessons out of this process. First of all, um, that even a process that's as limited as making one stitch over and over and over again can be meaningful if you reframe that activity interestingly over and over again infinitely. And that, to me, has been a very hopeful experience that I carry through anything. I can put up Rosalie with anything. Any conditions are fine with me. And I can do something with that, you know. And that's one thing I learned about it. The other thing, just sort of personally, that I learned is that I have the stamina to do this. I didn't think I had. Um, so those were experiences that, that I wouldn't trade. You know. So ten years later? Ten years later, it became like anything excessive uh, unhealthy. And um, because with knitting, I was basically sitting in a chair like this, knitting. And because I, I started to have a career with, with this kind of work, um, I was making one after the other, which meant I had to commit myself to a piece once I had started for a month or two, which left very little time for social, for a social life. And I'm a very social person. I actually love people. I find them super interesting. And um, I was utterly lacking that. But again, I didn't just stop because it's not what I do. And I was waiting for a natural end point to this, which came when I slipped the disc in my neck. And <laughs> no, I was actually, I, had, I, I, I grew up skiing. Um, and I hadn't skied in eight years or 10 years. And I was dreaming about it. And I finally had an opportunity uh, to go skiing in, in Montana. And the first day, it was a difficult hill with lots of moguls. And I just, I, I threw myself into this. And then that night, I uh, slipped the disc really badly. And a, pit, a nerve was pinched that ran into one so of my that arms. So that stopped the Did it for at least six months. And I took that as, I, I was actually deep down, despite the pain. You know, I was hopped up on painkillers and muscle relaxants. I was actually kind of happy in that state. <laughs> but um, I was also really happy because I knew that was it. So I got myself um, a little video camera that was small enough that I could hold with one hand. And I started to um, 
right from the first day when I got it, I started to make little video sketches. And um, because I couldn't really be in front of the camera, I asked friends to be in front of the camera. And it became, as soon as I did that, and as soon as I had access to people and was able to generate something with them, the floodgates opened and there was sort of no way back.